I have to say it's really quite amazing to see what is uh, going on in the world and uh, at YouTube as part of it. All this wisdom, this existing wisdom is uh, just so rapidly generating even more wisdom and infecting more people, other people and, and kind of creating a spiral upwards. And all of that with the current target of awakening humankind. But with everything it's easier said than done and we're not quite there yet. So to start uh, I'd like to put some attention on what do we actually understand as awakening at this point. So sp spiritually awakening means oneness. To lose all the bonds to the ego and have absolute awareness on the now. Well, uh, physically, awakening means uh, you wake up and you stay awake. But at this time, at this point, uh, that's not the case for most people. And luckily that's not the case. Because at this time, awakening means kind of the moment of awakening. Being oneness, waking up for a moment and then falling back to sleep again. Anyway. After this experience, what happens is, is uh, knowing can be described as knowing, um, not believing, but knowing. And the experience itself will change the human being because it's kind of recognizing the illusion of the ego and the truth in reality. But this does not mean that the ego is gone, it's still there, it's just different. And what remains is what I call a lucid ego, a, a transparent ego, which I like to visualize as a cobweb here. So while the previous and full ego of a person was more like an impervious web with no escape, the moment of awakening most commonly blows out all the old habits and emotions and thoughts and by that creates the lucid ego. It enables us to see through the illusion and, and to see the truth and uh, this this event may also free us from mental addictions or any type of depressions immediately because we just um, lose all the, the egoic habits to, to a certain extent the life changes from a, a total planning a type of living into an intuitive flowing which is basically living in the now. So as the title of this video already says, the lucid ego might be considered as the next step in evolution of the human race. And there are clear reasons for existence. For example, the survival of mankind is not yet secured. We haven't started to develop any higher senses and we haven't prepared for the next evolutionary jump which will eventually make the lucid ego obsolete. Now let's say we humans, we evolve into more beings. That doesn't mean that we don't have any enemies anymore. Like always in evolution, enemies stay. And it's kind of strange, but the biggest struggle of this lucid ego stage is the survival of the lucid ego itself. It's not secured, just kind of uh, circular. So why is the survival of the lucid ego not secured? There are two reasons that I see for this. And the first is what I call the ego gravitation. And the second is the contagiousness of minds. Okay, now what is ego gravitation? It's basically the same thing than normal gravitation, just not for matter, but for thoughts. And as this at this moment, is more like a thought model. I would just expect that at later times this or something similar will also be proven scientifically. Here you see the ego as the center, the center of illusion. And around it is, immediately around it is the everyday life, which happens every day to us, which is always very similar, always very same. And we can draw a, a gravitational pull radius around the ego, which always pulls known things to us and keeps away the unknown. This is the state of planning and 
dwelling in the past and living in the future and not living in the now and just not being but of course we all know that this is not everything yet so there's even more that we want so we want money and we want to be uh, accepted and we want to have a new car and we want to have a new tv and all of this just lingers at the gravitational pull radius and we just want it and we pull it closer and it's coming to us and as we said before in the moment of, of seeing through these illusions and in the moment of awakening we lose a lot of those habits we um, we get different ones new ones we want to be uh, wise and we want to have knowledge want to live and be kind of enlightened and oh, of course this is not very easy if the ego still wants all this stuff um, but it's better than wanting a new TV but also what we have to realize at this point is that we don't have to overcome this this gravitation completely um, that would be very wrong we have to live full in the life that's what it's for and um, it will soon enough be over so also enlightenment itself is not really life um, it still wants life so let's just i mean everybody us all as one experience all in the awareness there is well but we're not there yet so the second enemy of the lucid ego is the contagiousness of minds and what that means is that I mean we all kind of know that moods can be infectious but something is different here there's more than just moods so let's say you as an individual you develop a lucid ego and develop new qualities in your life which will be a higher awareness probably brilliant listening skills and higher energy and intuitive flow even then it's not so easy to sustain all this if you're in crowds with a lot of negative energy so why is that and uh, I can talk a bit of myself here which I see especially at work there are occasions when I'm kind of totally in a flow and everything lines up perfect just as it happens and uh, then it's like a, a sledgehammer you go into a meeting and you kind of feel that all this intuition and all the energy is just sucked right out of you and if you look at people it's very easy to s see what kind of state they are and what they feel and how they kind of think at the moment so what happens in this lucid ego state is that we develop new skills and one of them is empathy and uh, this empathy means that you can feel very easy or easier than before you feel emotions of other people even if they don't really show it to you or um, you might not even look at them or they might not even see you or you might not even see them so in simple words it's not making it easy to stay in an absolute aware state of mind and it wouldn't be fun if it if it were easy but you see that uh, the lucid ego the, the cobwebs they uh, still have things stuck to it and they kind of hide the, the truth again, the truth that you are oneness, the truth that you are unlimited energy. So we always have to stay alert and be conscious about it, recognize our feelings and be very grateful for them as they are, as the common moment is and eventually surrender. I mean, you're anyway surrendered all the time. And if there are situations in which we can surrender to the ego, then we just step into the ego again and do it the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm.